Hi there, in this video we will learn how to connect VWeb and Xano so that your front end and back end can communicate with each other. Uh, this can be for logins, server operations, you know, sending data to database, all that good stuff can only be done if you connect your Xano instance and VWeb. So the very first thing you need to do or understand is there are two types of connections. The first type of connection is a REST API connection where you'll be basically connecting um, VWeb as a data source, right? So you wanna pull data from the database, you wanna run some server functions, all of that is done through that plugin. And for authentication, that is for logging in, you know, like sending password and all that and registering users. For that, you need to have an authentication plugin by Xeno. So you're gonna do two integrations in one go all right so i'm assuming everybody who's watching this video you already have a vweb account and a xeno instance uh it can even be free it's still fine so let's head to uh vweb and start connecting our plugins right so first thing you're gonna do is just open up your vweb editor of your project and just click on add actually not add uh click on plugins and here um you might see something like this. Let me just reload. I was working on it earlier, that's why it's it's there. But if I go to plugins now, I can see a bunch of data sources, right? I can connect REST API, Xeno, Superbase, Airtable, whatever. In our case, we, we are Xano fans. So we're gonna go for Xano. Uh, we will select that and click on add. Here is where we have to add a uh, metadata API key, right? So what we're gonna do is we will head to Xano uh, and we will log in. If you're not in the screen, uh, make sure you click on the top left menu item and go to your instance, all right? And you need to select your instance, click on the gear icon to, to get more details about your instance. And from here, you need to find metadata API. So we will click that and here uh, select manage access tokens right so you're going to select that and here we are going to create a new access token for for your project right so i'm gonna uh, call it new i'm gonna call it demo demo vweb and expires will be never in most of the cases and these are the permissions which you are giving in most of the cases you will give all the permissions so i'm gonna create and it will give you your access token. This should be kept secret. So after I complete this video, I will remove this and replace it with something else. But the access token, you shouldn't give it to anybody else other than VWeb, all right? So just copy it, and you're gonna paste that access key in here. And after you paste it under instance, you'll be able to select the instances. So I just have one, so I'm gonna select my instance. I just named it my own name and the instance domain. If you are on a free plan, it will basically show you a say no domain, but I have my own custom domain. That's why it's showing my domain. And workspace, here you will select any of the workspaces you're working with. So on a basic paid plan, they will allow you to uh, create a sample, uh, of, I, I think three workspaces. So I, I have created a sample workspace like this. So I'm gonna use that. Next, you're gonna click on continue. And data source, you don't have to do anything here. Branching, don't have to do anything there as well, especially if you're starting out. When you're advanced, you will have a staging workspace and a production workspace. It is for advanced users. When you're starting out, you, you don't really need it. Uh, so we will click on continue to all these four things and then click on uh, add a connection collection. So we basically added the first part of Sano. We connected Sano. How can we verify if this connection is now active? So all you need to do is just go to plugins and uh, if you click on data sources near Sano, you should see a check mark. All right. So that is how we can be sure that uh, it is working and connected. Next is authentication. So for authentication, you have to do the same thing again. So before you do this, 
you need to make sure inside your Xeno instance, there is a user table, right? I think by default, when you create a workspace or I think, yeah, I think when you create a workspace, let me go into my instance and open my workspace. Xeno will let you create a user table automatically, like by default. If you don't have a user table, what you should do is go to databases and add a table, call it the users table. It doesn't have to be exactly that name, but you, you have to create a user table. And inside that user table, so just click on add table and create one if you don't have one. Uh, if I open user table, basically it has name, has email, a password field, and monthly usage. That, that's something I added for my test. Uh, to add a password field or name field, you just click on this, you know, uh, look for password field, right? And uh, name and email, name can be text, email can be the email field, right? So you need to have a user field uh, ready. Okay, now let's head back to VWeb and add our authentication plugin. So we'll go to plugins again. Instead of data sources, this time we will go for authentication plugins. And here you can see you can use say no, super base, token based auth, and uh, I guess VWeb is gonna add more providers, but we're gonna stick with Seno. So let's click on that, click on add. And here you have to use that metadata API key. So at the beginning of the tutorial, I showed you how you can get that API key from Seno by visiting instances, right? So we have to use that same key, or you can just go to Seno plugin and just click on this view icon to view that API key and, and reuse it, all right? So just copy the metadata API key, and once you do that, the instances should show your instance, and instance domain should automatically, uh, you know, populate, and workspace, you are going to select the workspace which you work with. I'm gonna select the demo work, workspace, and uh, get me endpoint. So when you create a, uh, a Xeno workspace. By default, Xeno will create that user table I showed you in a bit. And it also creates this authentication. It This folder will be called default, all right? Uh, it will also create these three authentication endpoints. Uh, one would be auth forward slash login. Another one would be auth forward slash me and auth forward slash sign up. Uh, so auth forward slash login is the endpoint or the backend um, API which will be used to log in a user. Next one is auth.me, it is used to get details about a user and the last one is auth forward slash sign up. If you don't know what these things are for now, just um, you know, follow this tutorial because in the next few tutorials we'll learn how the backend logics of logging in and signing up all that works all right in Seno. So right now we are just focusing on VWeb so we will make use of this. If you don't know how to create this, if you don't have this in your instance then you can always uh, just search for the videos in my YouTube channel and there will be um, a basic authentication creation tutorial in Seno. All right so uh, we will use that here, right? So get me endpoint. So here you have to select uh, the ME and login endpoint would be auth forward slash login and sign up endpoint is auth forward slash sign up, right? Now we're gonna click on continue. And it's not mandatory to use these names or not mandatory to use the exact endpoint Seno is providing us by default. We can create our own logins and signups. Uh, but if I talk about that, then it, this tutorial will be so long. I don't want that. So I just want to focus on VWeb and Seno connections for now. So we'll just stick with the defaults. Uh, data source, when you're starting, you don't need it. But when you when your app gets bigger, you you might need a staging database and production database and all, all that stuff. So we will talk about that later. So we're gonna, we're gonna click on continue for all of this. And define redirections. This is where you will 
um, basically select a page where your user should be redirected to if they are not logged in. So if you've seen, maybe when you click on a Facebook link, it will first take you to a login page and then Facebook will ask you to log in. Only after you log in, you will be forwarded to the real address, right? So you can define a page like that. So right now we, we just have a home page. So I'm, I don't really care. Uh, and yeah, once you have connected this here, uh, the last one is user role. Uh, this we will talk about uh, user role configurations later because it's a bit advanced as well. So yeah, so we just added a Seno database connector. That's the first plugin. This will this plugin will help us connect with Seno instance, and we can transmit data. We can send and receive data from Seno to our friend end, and then Seno auth is basically gonna help people log in and log out all right so once this is added we are ready to add a collection or we are ready to create our first API just to test if Seno is sending data to and from um, to, to VWeb and from VWeb so let's try to make a very simple API right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, go to Seno and here I am inside my demo instance and I am going to go to APIs and I'm going to add a new API group and I'm going to call it uh, test. All right. And I'm going to save it and I'm going to add my first endpoint. So here, Seno will give us few options. These are basically like templates. If you select uh, CRUD database operation, it just means you create a bunch of operations like read operation to a database, write operation to a database, uh, all that. I don't want to talk about it right now because it might get confusing for beginners. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom endpoint. So custom endpoint basically gives you a blank canvas. It will not have any, any templates or anything in there. So we are going to go for custom endpoint and I'm going to call it test one, right? Or you can call it test. It doesn't really matter. It just shouldn't be a name that is used in any other uh, API endpoints. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it uh, test one two three four or whatever. Then what I'm gonna do is I need to select a verb. So what's the type of request we are going to do? A get request is normally used to get something from the, from the server, right? A post request is used to send something from VWeb to say no so you want to send maybe a username and password that is a post request because you'll be sending data from vweb you are posting something think about it like all times we used to post things right i don't think the 2000s kids understand any of it <laughs> but posting basically means you're sending something from your front end to back end okay now uh, we have a bunch more delete means you want to delete a record put means you want to replace a record in database patch means you have to update a record uh, and head means honestly I don't know I have never used head I don't know why that is you I mean what's the use of that anyway for our test we will just use get we are going to try to get data from our Xeno to VWeb all right so I'm gonna click on get and I am going to disable authentication. If you enable it, that means Xeno will only give that data to your front end if the user is logged in. So that's a whole different story which we will cover in the next video, um, the user authentication. So right now we will just disable it and then we are gonna click on save. All right, so now we have a, an endpoint, get. So this is the endpoint URL. Here you can you can see three things. There's inputs, function stack, and response. So every endpoint can have inputs, and every endpoint needs to have a response. So let me show you an example. If I copy this endpoint URL, since this is a get endpoint, I can run it in my browser. So get endpoints, only get endpoints. If you if you want to run post then you need to use a tool like Postman. But get endpoints, you can just paste the URL in your browser and run it and you can see what it returns. So here you can see it returns null. Uh, what I wanna do 
for this demo is I want to return a, a test value, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add any inputs. I don't want to do any functions. I just want to res respond with a, a sample response. So I'm going to click on add response and on the right hand side, it's going to show a, a box where you should basically type in what the response should be. So if my response is hello, right? I, it's just a plain response. This is not how our responses should be, but I just want to show you how normal, uh, I mean, I just want to show you how, how to uh, build a plain text response now because it's the easiest. So I just typed in hello as our response, right? Uh, and I saved it. Now here you can see this is not published yet. It's in the, in the draft stage. So in Sano, you have to publish the endpoint for it to work properly. So I'm gonna click on copy endpoint and I'm gonna plus, and here you can see hello, right? Uh, but when servers communicate with each other front end and back end, the language they use, just like we, we use English, we understand English, um, the language servers use is one of the language servers use is called JSON, JSON, all right? So we need to send out responses using a JSON. So this is not the standard format, but I just wanted to show you how it's going to look like on a very simple API when we send out text. Okay. Now let's see if our V web application can receive this data. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add something called a collection to test this thing out. All right. So what we're going to do is just go to data, click on new collection. I'm going to give a say, uh, give the same name. I, it doesn't really matter. Test 999. If you want to create folders, it will keep things organized. Uh, I'm just going, I'm not going to create any folders. Description, this is more for you uh, to understand what this collection actually does. Uh, collection basically means it's a connection between, I wish they named it something else to be honest. Actually, this is basically a connection from VWeb to uh, your backend. In our case, it's Seno. So yeah, source will be Seno. Mod, dynamic. We will explain static and cache later. We'll go for dynamic now. I'm going to click on create. Now API group is the folder you create inside Sano for this API. So here you can see authentication, chat messages, uh, tests. So these are API groups, basically folders, right? Uh, it's a good way to organize things. So we need to select our API group. Uh, my API group is not listed. So let's just refresh. Now I can see tests. So I'm going to select that endpoint. I'm going to select the test endpoint and I'm going to click on continue. And here I can see hello coming in from here, right? I'm going to click on continue. And that is how we can confirm that a connection from Seno and VWeb is established. Now we are uh, just connecting Seno and VWeb through REST API. There is one more type of connection uh, that is sockets or real time events. It's a bit more advanced, but I, I don't recommend you delve into that. If you're a beginner, uh, just set up a test collection. So homework for today would be, uh, sign up for Sano. They have a very generous free plan. Sign up for V web. They have a free plan as well. Then connect the, the two, build your first API endpoint and send in some, some data, say hello to VWeb from Seno. All right. So that's the basic connection. All right. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope this tutorial was helpful for especially beginners who want to start learning VWeb and Seno. Um, I really hope this was helpful. Anyway, this is Abby and I will speak to you in the next one.